Yep. What have we missed anything? Oh, ah, uh, so we've done. Okay, so we haven't really covered the tent, have we? So, what do you think about the the Sulu? Well, actually, you did mention briefly about the Sulu. I did. Yeah. On, didn't yeah. So. Well, it, 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 you know, um, it's not light. I think it's 2.4 kilos. Yeah. But it's by far and away the most stable and snow resistant solo tent I've ever used. Right. Okay. You know, which is what it's designed for. Yeah. So it, it's quite specialist in a sense. It's, you know, it's not something you're going to take on a long distance trail in summer. No, I mean, no. It's, it's complete overkill for that. It's designed to stand up to blizzards, heavy snowfall, etc. Right, yeah. You know, which, which it does. Why do you think it's so popular? Is it, do you, is it popular because people, obviously Hillyburg helps, but is it popular because people want something that is, to use the expression, people use bomb proof? Um, um, because clearly for what, what most people use it for, you know, it's well, well over what is necessary, probably an Acto or Enan or something yeah. slightly lighter would be, you know, more than adequate, but clearly it's quite popular. I'm, I mean, how popular it is, I don't know. You have to see the sales figures to right, find yeah. that out. Um, I guess it is that people like the idea of having an incredibly tough tent. Yeah. And if you're, as I say, for me, it's, it's, it's a winter mountain tent, you know, when you're expecting stormy weather, yeah. lots of snow. But I can see that if you want to regularly camp high in the mountains, regardless of the weather, you know, even year round, something like this is going to be more comfortable than virtually all other solo right, tents. Right, yeah. As long as you're happy to carry it. Carrying the weight. Yeah. You know, which, yeah. which is considerable. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Have you had this one long? Well, quite a few years. Right, yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't get a lot of use because again, I regard it, you know, take it out when I think the conditions mean yeah. I'll be more comfortable in this than something else. Otherwise right, I'd okay. rather have something lighter. So what would you take into the mountains generally if you're not taking this? Oh, oh well, you know, it depends what the forecast is. Um, I'm not trying to lead you down towards MLD, but obviously we can mention it. <laughs> <laughs> well, MLD will come into it, but one of the ones I like, Winter, which is the the Wiki Ip Three, right. the bark, you know, um, pyramid tent that I took on the Noidark trip. Yeah. First part of that. That's great in winter because it's so roomy. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. And it's pretty stable in high winds. Not as stable as this, but. And of course, it's not designed as a solo tent. It doesn't weigh as much as this. It's, it's designed to sleep three, which I think is pushing it. Right, but certainly yeah. it's had, you know, plenty of room for two. Yeah. Um, the the Duomid XL MLD. Yeah. Yep, I've used that a fair bit. You, I know you've seen pictures of that in, in the snow. In, in winter. Um, would you use that if it was snowing, though? Would there be a problem with spindrift getting in? Well, yeah, it could. Uh, if, if snow was forecast, any considerable amount of snow, I would probably be taking this. Right, OK. Because, yeah, spin, spin drift, you would need to have a solid inner, yeah. you know, to keep the snow out of everything. If you put snow around the edges, would that keep oh, it, it th out? That, that would help, yeah. Um, Condensation would then be terrible, of right, course, yeah. because you've cut off the airflow. But, yeah, I mean, there's a small but vent that, at the top, that but it's helps, not very big, yeah. though. You'll notice with this one, because it's signed for winter, there isn't an air gap. Yeah, so it's very, this very is, close to this, the ground. Lo lots of tents that claim to have down-to-the-ground ground sheets actually don't touch the ground itself. Right. You can see with this, 
I mean, look at the side there. Yeah. That is flush to the ground. Yeah. And that again is designed so to keep snow no way. and so wind it's, so out. It's really a, like you, know, you said, it's really a storm. It's, it's solo. It, oh yes, yeah, uh, yes. Winter snow. Yeah. Is, is it big enough? <coughs> <coughs> is it big enough for a winter snow tent though? Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's got, um, it's certainly big enough for me. Right, If someone's yeah. six foot four, probably not, but right. you know. Um, it's quite long. It's also, which is significant, yeah, I can sit up in the middle, but you can see the ends are fairly steep. Yeah. So you yeah. don't have low ends where they're, when the wind comes, they're touching your sleeping bag, which yeah. is getting damp. You sit up and your head immediately hits, hits the roof, yeah. you know, and so on. So this is good in the, the way the space is used inside. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have a slightly bigger porch, but I've always, you know, I've always managed with it. It's not... Right. And, and you could cook in that in the winter? Oh, yeah, to cook it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I, ha I have, yes. Yeah. I mean, you can... You can open the door from the top for ventilation. Right, it's okay, two, yeah. Two ways it. Yeah. So you don't, um, no, it, it, say, it, it's an excellent tent. Yeah. It's heavy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we did. But, uh, okay, we'll just mention about the RAV yeah, generator well, jacket then. Because, because there was a chance of, you know, rain and rain in camp, and it wasn't going to be so cold that I thought a thick down jacket would be nice. And this is synthetic, and in fact, this is another thing that I could have brought a much lighter synthetic jacket and be warm enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't... You know, this is designed for colder temperatures yeah, than yeah. we've had, so... It, it, it is a nice jacket, and then I, um, I, I, I found one of those online with a bit of discount on, so I must have. I did, uh, I d I did I, grab one. I don't know of any other synthetic fill jacket this warm at this weight. No. That's the thing. Yeah. There are others that are just as warm or warmer, but they yeah. weigh a fair bit. Yeah. More. You know, this is, this is, and, and it's relatively compact for a synthetic yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, the only other so. one that I know of, and you well, obviously would know a lot more, but the only one that I know of is, and if they still even do it, is Paramo did an insulated Oh, yeah. they jacket. still do. And they it, they and still it, do it, do And they? it's excellent. Yeah. But it's, it's a much heavier, it'd be heavier it's than that. It's quite a bit heavier than this. Yeah. It's about the same warmth. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it is. I've, it's I've got one. There's nothing I... wrong with it. It's a good jacket. Yeah. You know. It's just much um, heavier. But it's just, the thing is, this has got this aerogel special fill and other things that make it, you know, warm. Yeah. Warm for the yeah. weight. It's, it's, it's got the same amount of insulation in it, though, because that was something... When I was chatting with, I know it has, because when I was chatting with, with yeah. Dave in Cheddar, I was asking, he's in the Gorge Outdoors, if anyone's ever passed in that shop, go and say hello. Um, but we were talking about this RAB generator, and he was thinking that the Paramo would have more insulation in it, because it's a heavier jacket. Mm. And obviously he didn't, he, he didn't know the specs of, of the RAB. And then I looked it up, and they're both 133 mm. grams per square yard meter or whatever but mm. it's the same it's the same amount of insulation in it well when i looked it up i mean i could be wrong you can well, double check it but i think it's the same i mean i'd have to see the jacket the paramo jacket i've got is 10 12 or more years old probably yeah so i don't know if they've changed the specs in, maybe since then maybe um, I still think it's 133 grams per but, square meter, you know, though. Uh, I, I did look but I don't that. know if that's what mine is. Right. Because it's, yeah, you know. well, you're, you're, I mean, but the other I thing, one well, as well. The shell fabric. But obviously, the aerogel in it is part of the insulation. Yeah. And it's lighter weight. Yeah. Um, I suppose insulation has got lighter over the years, hasn't it? Synth it synthetic. Oh, synthetic, yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and it's got. It's not just the weight of insulation, it's how lofty the insulation is as well, and that's changed. Right, okay. So synthetic jackets now are lighter for the, the warmth than they were 20 years ago. All oh, right. Um, they still haven't caught up with down, but as with down, as you know, the same amount of 550 fill down 
and 850 fill down, the 850 fill down jacket will actually be warmer. Right, okay. For yeah. the same amount, because it lofts more. Right. Well, synthetic yeah. insulation <laughs> isn't all the same. So, you know, yeah. there, there's huge variations between different types of synthetic insulation. Yeah. And some is a lot better. So with, with the with the one thousand fill power that PhD use, yeah, and I think uh, at least Rab, one other uses, Rab are using it. They're using well. it as well, are they now? So do they use the same amount of feathers as 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 like nine hundred, or they're using less feathers? How how does that how does how thousand, do you mean feathers? What 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 the down? Well, not I, I the down. feathers. Well, the down. Yeah. Um. Theoretically, if you use the same amount of 1,000 fill power down as 900 fill power down, the, the garment or sleeping bag should be slightly warmer. Right, OK. Because 1,000 fill power will loft more. Obviously, I, I use the 550 and the 850 as an example, because that's 300 right, difference. Yeah. That's big enough difference. Big you gap, would notice yeah. it. How much you'd notice the difference between 900 and 1,000, I don't know. Right, yeah. Because you're obviously up at, you know, they're not that There's, different. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I mean, I certainly have tried and failed with different jackets and sleeping bags to differentiate between 800, 850 and 900, and they're too close. Right, yeah. I'm sure, I mean, in the lab, statistically, there is a difference. Right, yeah. But in practical use, no, I can't, you, you can't I can't tell, tell what it is. No. So, you know. Um, no. Probably, maybe just, just the weight of the item is the only real advantage well, you, look at, you get. You look, yeah, you, you, look at, you look at weights, and then you've all, and the thing there is, you've got to look at shell fabrics, uh, you know, what's the weight of the shell fabric? Um, zips, features, how many zips are there? How many pockets are there? Yeah. You know, how many draw cords are there? All these things add, <laughs> add, add weight. Yeah. So it's not just the weight of, of the fill. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you can see this. If you, if you look at, you know, the way PhD let you design your own sleeping bag. Yeah. And as you design it, the weight changes, they yeah. tell you. Yeah. Well, you know, you can look at a simple bag, no extra features. Add in a full length zip. Yeah. Watch the weight go up. That's right, yeah. Add in a shoulder baffle, watch the weight go up. Yeah. Change the zip to a half zip, watch the weight go, go down. down. But you can yeah. see how component, <clears throat> change the shell fabric, which you can do as well. Yeah. And you can watch the weight go up or down. You know, yeah. the downfill stays exactly the same all the time. So again, yeah. you've got to look at what features, you know, what do you want that you're prepared to carry extra weight for? Yeah. Rather than the very simple basic bag, which is the lightest, yeah. but it doesn't have... Yeah, you, you want know, to have one or two extra rest little features on so it. You've got yeah. to see what, you know... How it, how it changes. Yeah. Um, Okay, all right. I think that's covered everything that you have brought with you this time. The main, the main things and everything. I don't think you've brought anything any differently. So I don't know whether these. <laughs> I think I'm in the dark. I think I'm virtually in the dark here. So thank you very much to. I'll point it at you because at least there's a bit of light on you. So there's no light oh, on yes, me here. Oh yes, it's still down there. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much to Chris for you know taking us through his his equipment and uh you know we look forward to seeing you on the next trip and see yeah. if we get some snow next time i was going to say let's hope there's actually some snow and, and good enough weather that we can reach it yeah yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's cleared up nicely now there's a bright moon up there yes so i think it's going to be colder tonight than last night yeah you know, wrap up warm and stay safe and comfortable and thank you very much for for you know, inviting me along and <laughs> okay say, having You're fun, welcome. <laughs> taking us through the video <laughs> thanks mm -hmm. very much thank you thank you everybody for watching